WISC TV now presents For the Record. Governor Tommy Thompson on his journey of a lifetime is next on For the Record. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Heinen. Wisconsin's longest serving governor, 20 years in the state legislature, candidate for U.S. Senate and President of the United States, Secretary of Health and Human Services under George W. Bush, successful business executive and farmer in Elroy. Now that's a journey. It's a journey Tommy Thompson has captured in a new book, Tommy, My Journey of a Lifetime, written with his friend and our friend, author and former editor of Madison Magazine, Doug Moe. Doug joins me for a conversation with Wisconsin's best known, respected, and widely liked political figure, Tommy Thompson. Governor, nice to see you again. Neil, thank you. Congratulations I mean, that, on that, your new book. That was over the top. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, Doug. Good to Thanks, see you again. Neil, you too. Before we start on the, uh, on the book, Governor, uh, maybe just a memory of, of Senator John McCain. As we John, mourn his John loss. McCain, I had my, my good moments with him. I had my bad moments. Sure. Uh, bad moments was when I w went to him to try and get some money for Amtrak. I was chairman of the board. He hated Amtrak, <laughs> and he made no bones about telling me how much he disliked Amtrak. Yeah. Yeah, but then, on the good side, he was such a so tremendous supporter on health care. When I was secretary, he was always calling what he could do, how he could do it, how I, he could be helpful on the floor of the U.S. Senate. He was just a remarkable guy, a great patriot, a great American, and a great public figure. We're all going to miss him. I kind of feel like the two of you looked at public service in similar ways in a way. Well, we both love government. Yeah. We love the fact, you know, that government was set up to help people. Not to hinder them, to give them an opportunity. That was, that was McCain, and I think that's certainly me. You know, there are two elements to the book. Um, terrific book, by the way. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just a great read that I Thank think you. make it so compelling. And, and, and the first is, you know, the incredible sequence of stops in, in, in the journey <laughs> from elections to Harley rides, from 9/11 to Africa. But the second is the journey itself, which starts in Elroy and, to a degree, ends in Elroy. Help us understand the importance, Tommy, of the Elroy to Madison to Washington. Well, you always remember, or you should remember, I always do, your formative years. You remember your mother and father who you loved dearly. You remember your classmates. You remember growing up, your fun times, your bad times. And in Elroy, you know, it's such a small place. As I've always said, you know, you can call somebody, get a wrong number, still talk for half an hour. That's still Elroy. And yesterday during the floods, or this past week during the floods, people were out filling sandbags, helping their neighbors, calling up, what can I do? What can we do to help you? It's that kind of closeness, that kind of, you know, friendship that always remains uh, with you growing up with that attitude you know you have you grew up poor and you, but you remember the how rewarded you really were with friends and relatives and opportunities of a small community and I always I love that city and I always go back I don't know I don't know if I can remember a memory of, of Tommy Thompson that doesn't include Elroy I mean that, that from the <laughs> earliest point in his in his political career and I, I've driven through Doug but I don't I've never really spent any time there I mean you've obviously spent not just time on the farm but in Elroy and where, where Tommy grew up how did that inform your thinking about the book I well I want to say one thing quick Neil that I'd like uh, Governor Thompson to remember uh, regarding Elroy was when President George H.W. Bush uh, took you out for lunch that time in Washington and took you to his private club. Yes. <laughs> and then what did he do? He took you in the kitchen. George H.W. Bush. Right. I was with him and we were at his private club. Uh, we were going to go to the Alfalfa Club, the one you know which is the parody on journalists. <laughs> and uh, we went there and I was amazed. He says, Tommy, come with me. Here's the President of the United States. He takes me by the, you know, not by the hand, but encourages me to go in the kitchen so he could, inter so he could introduce me to the cook and the people washing dishes. And the funniest thing happened. Everybody knew him by his first name. Mr. President, how are you? We haven't seen you in 10 days or, or six weeks. Okay. But the, for the President of the United States to go in and thank those people working in the kitchen will always stay with me. Yeah. That, that's a remarkable person, and I've always tried to do that. And it always reminds me, you know, when I first ran, I went in, and I'll never forget this. I walked into this guy that was running the automobile dealership in Montella, Wisconsin. 
And he said, yeah, you, you look like a nice young man, and we need some new blood. And he said, I will support you. I walked out, and he came back out after me, and he says, I'm not going to support you anymore. And I hear him, 23 years old, running for my first office, and he tells me he's not going to support me. And I said, why? He says, because I thought you were smart. And I don't think you're that smart anymore. And I said, why? He says, because you shook my hand, but I got 45 people working here as mechanics uh -huh. and people in the office, and you didn't go by and ask them for, your, for their vote. Uh -huh. And I'll never, <laughs> ever do that again. That experience, George H.W. Bush, always remember where you come from, always go back and say hello and thank you to the people that prepare the meals, deliver the meals, work on your car. That is a lesson of life that I'll never forget. And that's a, that's the finish of that story. In the kitchen, was President Bush said, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget yeah. where you came from. And, that, right. and, that and you is, never have. And I never have, and I never will. <laughs> that's right. why I go back to Elroy. Yeah. And I'll tell you, uh, what really was funny is when I put up this big war room, <laughs> it was as big as this whole room. And HSS. And yep. HHS, yep. you know, yep. after 9-11 yep. and after uh, uh, the scare of uh, the epidemics, uh, I put this up, and right in the center, I have all the countries, all the major cities, and right in the city, the center of the universe is Elroy. Yep. And uh, Don Mumsfeld and Dick Cheney came over to see the war room because they heard so much about it. And they said, what is Elroy doing as the center? Where is Elroy? I said, right there. The center of the universe. And, and that, they have taken it down, but they still named the war room after me. We're going to start with election number one, and we're going to do that when we come back with Governor Tommy Thompson right after this. For the record, sponsored by MG&E, your community energy company. It's the Super Labor Day sale at Denver Mattress. Get free Bose noise mask and earbuds, a $300 furniture row gift certificate, or a 50-inch LED TV with any qualifying purchase. Plus, seven years, no interest. The Super Labor Day sale at Denver Mattress ends Monday. Well, it's going to be a beautiful sunny day today, and we can expect much more of the same of it. Motorcycles are not invisible. But they can seem that way to drivers who aren't paying close attention. Look twice for motorcycles. Seeing them is saving them. How do you show up? Do you just bring it? Or do you bring it? third row like a pro. Use your Labor Day purchase cash to get over 6,600 below MSRP on this 2018 all-wheel drive Acadia SLT model. Or get over 7,100 below MSRP when you finance through GM Financial. We are professional grade. GMC. People are excited about the Wisconsin Lottery's new Packers Instant Scratch games. Some people are even taking the leap with a chance to win up to $45,000 instantly and a bonus drawing for a pair of coveted season tickets at Lambeau Field for two years. It's no wonder fans want to be a part of this game. Instant cash prizes and a chance to win Packers season tickets. Go ahead, do the leap. It's the Super Labor Day sale at Denver Mattress. Get free Bose noise mask and earbuds, a $300 furniture row gift certificate, or a 50-inch LED TV with any qualifying purchase. Plus, seven years, no interest. The Super Labor Day sale at Denver Mattress ends Monday. Governor Tommy Thompson has written a book on his lifetime, Tommy, My Journey of a Lifetime. He wrote it with Doug Mull, a Madison journalist and former editor of Madison Magazine. So it's... It, it's the summer of 1966, um, Governor, and your first run for office. So you assess the field, uh, not by using political operatives or pollsters. <laughs> you look at the guy you've known forever in that office, and you decide, okay, I, I can run against this guy. You borrow money from the local bank to, among other things, 500 bucks. buy a used car. 200,000 miles on it. You talk to your family. You arrange with your dad for 10 bucks a day, right. which is extremely significant. It all seems like this unrecognizable contrast to <laughs> politics today, right? I mean, to the decision of somebody to run to office today. It really is. You know, it was back then, and nobody went door to door. And I think that's why I won. 
Here, I'm 23 years of age, running for public office for the first time in a state assembly against a 16-year incumbent of my political party who wouldn't give me a job because he was afraid I might run against him. And he went on a cruise because he didn't think I had a chance, and which is all true. Right. And I went door to door, and any time I could see a group of people, I went over and shook their hands. I went to weddings. I went to funerals. I don't know if it was that sort of you know, uh, the right thing to do, but I did because there were people there. And don't worry, it was the right, in your district, it was probably the right <laughs> was thing to do. Juno, Marquette County, Funerals and nobody ever people got together. Right. I went out to farmers, I went out to town board meetings, and nobody ever campaigned that way. Of course, they do that now all the time, but back then, that was really unique. And people would say, you know, that young Tommy Thompson was here, and I liked him. You know, he shook my hand. He came to my door. He came to my farm. He, he went bowling with me on an evening. You know, we went door to door till 8 o'clock in the evening. Then we went to the bowling alleys and bowled until midnight. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have a family. I didn't have any money. And I didn't have anything to do but campaign. And I, luckily, I won. One thing that it seems never changed from that point was trusting your gut, trusting your instinct. I never, you know, excuse me, I got a cold here, and I, I never ever uh, uh, didn't trust my gut. Yep. You always trust your gut, I, even today. You know, if my heart wants me to do something, my gut tells me no, I'll, I have learned over the long run, and uh, wrongly sometimes, and, uh, you know, you trust your gut, you'll do all, you'll do all right. Yep. And that's that's what I did. And that's, what I, that's how I campaigned. And, I always tried to outwork everybody, and I guess it's the work ethic growing up in Elroy. My, you know, my father taught me, he said, at a young age, if you want that tricycle or that bicycle, come down to the grocery store and clean eggs, and I'll pay you uh, 50 cents, uh, uh, 25 cents an hour, 50 cents for two hours. I can remember that because I, I put it up there. I remember when I got a buck and how much money I needed for my bicycle. Yeah. There's, there's way too many stories in this book that we can cover in a half an hour. And so I'm going to tell people right now, you know, we're going to skip over a lot of stuff. But I just want, you know, the stuff, some of the things that, that jumped out at me, Tommy, was the extraordinary role that your friends and, 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 and people close to you paid, uh, uh, played in, in, in your life from that first race on. I mean, these are, there's a, there's a loyalty there. And these were your sources, Doug. I mean, th these are people that were just um, so instrumental in, in, your, uh, in your career. And yet there's, there's an element there that I don't think we see much today. Well, I love friends. I love people, first off. You, and you got to love people. And I think that becomes infectious, you know. I, I can remember when you started here. Right. In 1987, I started as governor. We've had, you know, concurrent careers. And... Uh, you've always been fair with me, and I'll always remember that. I always remember Neil Hynum as being fair, honest, and straightforward. And and that it goes a long way. If you treat people nicely, if you treat people nicely, they respect that. And, and I always tried to hire people that were smarter than me and younger than me because n nobody could keep up with me. <laughs> and, and so I wanted people that were young and energetic and wanted to get a chance in politics. And that's why some of my young people, like uh, uh, Dave Bechtel just called me on the way in, you know, and he's out in Washington, D.C. Yep. Billy McCosh, yep, yep. Dean Stinsberg, yep. you know, all these young people that have now gone on in their own careers and done so well. I love that. I love that in people. And they, of course, enjoyed working for me. Uh, it was tough, because I'm, I'm not an easy person to work for, but they respected me. But it wasn't just, I mean, you're, we're talking about uh, Clauser and McIver oh. and Wood, and uh, what a well, group. Well, yeah, I wanted to jump in, though, yeah. and, and just say that this is a very savvy politician, though, too, and that started early, real quick how you got on joint finance <laughs> as a freshman legislator. Oh, that was a story. With Harold Fraley. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was a story because Harold came, you know, nobody supported me from Madison. You know, they all said I didn't have a chance against the 16-year incumbent, Louis Rommel, great guy. And we became very close friends, and I nominated him to become sergeant of arms after right. I defeated him. Uh, you don't do that anymore in politics, but that shows you, you know, the friendship. But anyway, those individuals were always there, and Harold Fraley came to me and wanted to be speaker. And I said, my 
<laughs> you wanted your vote. My vote is going to re require you giving me a seat on joint finance. He says, no freshman ever gets that, and I'm not going to do it, and he walked out. He said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but when he needed my final vote in order to make the difference, he only won by one. Uh, I was the 13th person to sign up for him, and he promised me a joint finance committee. That's how I got on a joint finance committee. And there was, I mean, no vote, no. <laughs> Freshman ended up on joint finance committee. I mean, it was well, a he needed the, my board, right. and that's how I got it. I, but I partly did. And you had worked as a page and whatnot, so yes. you knew how that place worked. I knew and what, to get on that committee was key. I knew that if I, and, and, that, and Doug captured it so well. The nice thing about Doug, you know, uh, you can be a 800-pound pig. If Doug Moe puts the lipstick on, <laughs> you become you become a beauty. Well, put and, the, and that is, you know, he is a craftsman uh. and an artist and uh, extraordinary. He's the Rembrandt of uh, Madison literature, right. I think, but I may be wrong, but I think he is. <laughs> so I guess the point, Doug, is that th th this guy played politics different. Well, yeah, especially, and it's impossible not to look uh, from today, the yeah. prism of today, right. you know. Um, but you touched on the friends, and I think if, uh, uh, I was asked by, by an, another reporter about what stood out in all your research and the time you spent, and, and the loyalty um, of the governor's uh, friends and colleagues really did. Because um, I was coming into him to confirm stories, that sort of thing, in some cases 30 years later. And they not only remembered the story <laughs> vividly, um, but it was just clear the warmth and affection that came through in telling the story and the laughter in a lot of cases. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, I, I don't think people appreciate even now the significance of of you naming um, Tim Cullen and Steve Bablich to your cabinet. Yeah. Two Democrats. Right. Steve is the first secretary of the Department of Corrections, mm -hmm. you know, before it was just a division. And and Tim, as, as your secretary of, of health and social services, the idea that a Republican governor would, uh, you know, would appoint two Democrats, I think is just anathema today. It is anathema, and it shouldn't be, right. you know. If you want government to work, and that's what I wanted, and I looked at the, I looked at the terrain. I mean, I got Democrats on the left, Democrats on the right, Democrats in front of me, Democrats behind me. Very few Republicans, and they controlled both the legislators, halls, the Senate, and the House. And if I was going to get anything done, I got to make sure it's bipartisan. And I looked around, and Tim Cullen, you know, I didn't think he'd come, and I, and I still to this day don't know why <laughs> he chose to join me, but he did, and he was fantastic. And we got going, and then he brought Steve Babbage in, and Steve Babbage and I became friends, and and uh, we decided, Steve, Tim, and I. This was a, it wasn't me talking to a bunch of Republicans. The three of us sat down and said, you know, the best thing for Wisconsin is to have a separate Department of Corrections, and. Uh, and, you know, they brought it to me, and was their idea as much as mine. Yeah. And we set up the Department of Corrections, so two Democrats and a Republican coming together and making a decision for the Department of Corrections. And Steve said, you know, I really would like to run it, but I'm a Democrat. I said, I know that. You got it. <laughs> I mean, there was no real lobbying. I never expected anybody else but Steve... Uh, to be, and he was fantastic. But so was Tim. Yeah. Tim brought me ideas all the time. Not, not all that I agreed with. Mm -hmm. And don't think we didn't fight and argue, but the truth of the matter is he was honest, he was straightforward, and he loved making government work. And that's that was the key, making government work. We're going to talk about September 11th when we come back with Governor Tommy Thompson right after this. God, excuse me. What is this? What? Tires are expensive. Taking care of your car shouldn't take over your life. Meineke can fix your car and get you back to what matters. Now at Meineke, get a basic oil change for just $19.95. Meineke, on with life. This is an exciting time in the energy industry. The world is changing, and we want to work toward common goals. Toward a cleaner energy future, driven by innovation, powered by working together. By working with customers, we provide customers what they want. MGE e is your community energy company for the future, powering our community, sharing your values, partnering to meet your needs. Visit Energy2030Together.com to create a more sustainable future together. 
The all-new 2019 Subaru Ascents are here at Don Miller. This is the biggest Subaru ever and available with your Don Miller deal during the Subaru A Lot to Love event. The Ascent, a bigger, better family SUV. It's loaded with safety features like Subaru's standard EyeSight collision avoidance system. Also up to 5,000-pound towing capacity, symmetrical all-wheel drive, and so much more. Don Miller Subaru, West on Odana, or the brand-new expanded Eastside store on High Crossing Boulevard, Madison. Congratulations to Marsha Mikulon and Jacob Mills, the ringleaders of Wild Rumpus Circus and Mazomania. That's all we want people to try to do here at camp is just try. You might surprise yourself. I couldn't imagine doing anything else, for one thing. I mean, we feel just so lucky that we get to work with kids in this way. If you know a teacher who deserves to be recognized as a top-notch teacher, send us a letter, an email, or nominate a teacher at channel3000.com. Sponsored by Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries and by Concordia University. What is this? What? Tires are expensive. Taking care of your car shouldn't take over your life. Meineke can fix your car and get you back to what matters. Right now, get free towing when you sign up for Meineke Rewards. Meineke, on with life. My colleague Doug Moe and I are back with Governor Tommy Thompson, with whom Doug has written a book, Tommy, My Journey of a Lifetime. Um, one of the most dramatic stories in the book, of course, is uh, is your being in Washington yeah. on September 11th. I mean, in in, in retrospect, it's <laughs> it it says a lot about you. But at the time, in the in, in the, just the in, in the tension of, of of the moment, that moment of crisis, you had to make some pretty important decisions. What was that like? I'll never forget it. It was uh, it was coming into work. I'd given a a speech, and I was coming in about eight o'clock in the morning. And the uh, first plane hit as I was coming in in the uh, Humphrey building, and it sounded strange. It would hit the, the tower, and then got upstairs, and the second one hit. I knew something was wrong. And then, uh, and then the Pentagon, and then everything transpired. Yeah. And I knew immediately that uh, we're going to have to do something dramatic. And I knew it was going to be the Secretary of Health that had to do it. And... <clears throat> Cheney was in the White House in a secured spot. President Bush was in Florida on an educational tour. And I knew a lot of the responsibility was going to be on my shoulders that day because people needed medicine, they needed doctors, and they needed it. And so I declared a health emergency. I don't think any secretary has ever done that before, and I never know. A national said, health a emergency. A national health emergency. Yeah. And by doing that, we were able to get a plane in the air. And if you remember, all the planes were grounded. We yeah. got a plane in the air. And there are, there, at that time, there were eight sites which had about 50 tons of medical supplies, top secret in each of those sites. Since then, at my request, it's been re increased to 12. And there's 100 tons of medical supplies and drugs and everything that you need in an emergency. And we got a plane to deliver 50 tons of medical supplies up, uh, up to uh, uh, the city of New York. And... Uh, by 5 o'clock that day, I think we're the only one outside of the Air Force that got a plane in the air that day, and that was to deliver medical supplies. And then, of course, we had to get personnel up there, uh, doctors and so on and so forth. And the main thing was one of the things we really had to get was dogs, dogs to be able to smell. Yep. And then, of course, they kept getting burnt because of that. And we had to get uh, veterinarians up there to take care of the dogs yep. that were helping out the, the policemen. It was an amazing thing. And I'll never forget it, and the next day I decided I had to be up there. And I was the first secretary to be on the ground, you know, and went around and thanked people, but went to the morgue and went to the hospitals uh, to see patients that people like, delivered, you know, some moral help, but also encouragement that resources were coming. It was, a, it was absolutely a day I'll never forget. I walked down and all I could see, you know, uh, all the stop and go lights were out, and people were not honking their horns. Nobody was smiling. It was just an ashen look on their face, and all the debris was still circulating in the air. It was, it was uh, just a, a really dark, dismal thing, and nobody honked their horn. Everybody was polite, serious, and wanting to be helped. It was like like something you've never seen before. Ignoring the threat of arrest to be there. Yeah, yeah um, you, you should tell that one quick, Governor. How, how uh, <laughs> the, the vice president had wanted you to leave and go out to a secure bunker this Mount Weather. We're close with the story. <laughs> they ordered me out, and I, I didn't want to go, and they said they were going to arrest me. 
And finally, my, my people said, you got to go. And I said, I'm, I'm here. I need to be here. And I told my security, uh, Mike Lynette, a fantastic guy, and I said, I'm going to Mount Weather, which is a city in the mountain, 175 feet down. They got a whole city there to take care of emergencies like this. They had all the cabinet out there. And I said, I'm going to walk in, I'm going to check in, I'm going to walk out the back door. You have your car there and pick me up and get me back. I, I, they picked me up and flew me out in a helicopter. I landed and <laughs> signed in, picked up my bedding for the night, threw it on my bed, walked out the back door, <laughs> got in Lynetta's car, was back in my office by 4 o'clock that afternoon to say thank you because I knew I was there. And I was there the next morning at 5 o'clock in the morning shaking hands with people that had the courage to come into work. A lot of people did, and I wanted to really thank them for coming. Anyone who had seen Elroy on the map in the war room should have known <laughs> that, uh, what was going to happen. The Journey of a Lifetime. Governor, congratulations. It's a great book. I Th loved it. Th thank you. Thanks for, for taking that. the time to come on. Doug, yeah, nice to see you. Said, even, an, even this guy yeah. made, it, made it wonderful. We're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this. <laughs> National Clearance Event is on now. Get low APR financing and great lease offers on the remaining 2018s, like the adventurous RAV4, economical Corolla, reliable, fun-to-drive Camry, and more. Final days are going on now. Get 0.9% APR plus $750 bonus cash on a new 2018 RAV4. Or get $2,500 customer cash on RAV4. The deals end September 4th. Come in today and get yours before they're gone. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, Madison, it's the final week of A1 Furniture's grand opening. Get grand opening savings, up to $1,000 in A1 instant rebates, plus up to three years no interest financing. $1,000 two-piece sofa and loveseat, only $695. $800 power recliner, only $497. $2,000 reclining three-piece sofa, loveseat and recliner, only $1,347. Grand opening savings store-wide at all three locations. A1 Furniture and Mattress, always first in price, service, and satisfaction. Don't let the hard hat fool you. We're just like anybody else. And just like you, road workers want to make it home safely. So please drive carefully. Every driver can set the right example. Even you. Just be patient. Put down the phone. Never text and drive. And if you can do so safely, please give us a little extra room. Work zone safety. It's, it's everyone's, everyone's responsibility. responsibility. Sponsored by the Wisconsin DOT. Get ready for Labor Day with Shopko's biggest ever hot buy event. Pepsi 12-pack cans, four for $11. BOGO 60% off package basics. And get a free $10 MasterCard gift card when you spend $30 on these products and more. Shop in-store and online at shopko.com. Kids already have a lot to worry about as they head back to school. And now, there's safety. It's something that they're a lot more aware of. A local therapist takes time to talk about stress over security and how to calm your child's nerves. Monday on News 3 at 10. 33 and a half million a year. It's Mark King money. <laughs> Happy birthday. But I would be here in Madison. It's in Madison. It is, it is. This movie's all foam, no bite. What? Look at you. There's always more on Live at 4. Join WISC TV and Walk to End Alzheimer's October 7th. My thanks to Doug Moe and Governor Tommy Thompson and you for joining us. See you next week on For the Record.